All right, so I'm recording now, so this one will, will go up in the archives when we're done. So uh, lucky today to have uh, uh, Coach Moran from Massabesic High School uh, with us. Coach uh, was the head coach at Massabesic for quite some time. Uh, now he's an assistant there. Uh, but uh, Coach and I go back a little bit. My first Lobster Bowl in 2001, I think. We had uh, Otash and Porter at quarterback, right? Those were pretty good. But he gave me a shot on that staff to come out and work with those guys. And I got to spend a good week with, with a lot of good coaches. So appreciate that, Coach. Oh, I'll tell you, I, it, it certainly – I, I certainly came to know that it wasn't going to be long before you were going to be recognized as one of the better head coaches in this state after spending that week with you. Well, thanks, man. I, I appreciate that. That was a fun week. I was over on the defensive side of the ball with uh, Coop and Teasel and uh, Suddy. So uh, that was a fun, fun time. And that, that, not a bad staff, huh? Not a bad staff. Yeah, we, we drummed up some pretty good stuff that week, I, I think. Those kids probably got coached up all right. Well, thank you, guys. Uh, you made me look good. Ah, those are, well, I think Cash and Porter made us all look good, man. Those guys were good. There's not many of us in states who can say that we coached a uh, an NFL quarterback for a day, and, and he right. wasn't even, and he didn't even win the Fitzy. I know, and and uh, also Andrew Hall was on that team, who was a, a Levitt kid, played wide out in that game. He uh, ended up playing at, at Dartmouth, and uh, he, had, he had a shot last year to make the the cap line for the Olympic team. Wow. So, yeah, now he's in all sorts of Under Armour commercials, stuff like that. He, he's done pretty well. But that was a talented school. There was all sorts of guys on that, that squad that were pretty talented. So that was a lot of fun. So, uh, Coach is going to talk to us today about uh, connecting your high school program and your theater program together. So excited to hear that. And, and I'm going to kind of stay in. Coach is going to share his screen, but we'll try to make it a little bit interactive uh, where I ask him some questions as we go. So if you guys have some questions as we go, uh, throw them up in the chat, and, and I'll make sure they get answered. So. Go ahead, Coach, all you. Now, this certainly isn't something that has to flow. So if you get a question about a certain thing that we're discussing at the time, please uh, please send that in. And I've told Mike I want this to try to be as interactive as possible. Uh, thank you to Mike for uh, for what he's doing. I've really enjoyed these this week. And uh, and and you're never too uh, you're never too old to learn uh, in this sport. Certainly have come to find that out as. Uh, as uh, I've gone a little long in the tooth do, doing this. And uh, it's great to be back involved and see how much uh, the game has changed and try, trying to catch back up. And thank you guys for that. Are, thank you guys that are joining because uh, at least I got to mute my phone here. I'm getting a phone call. Um, I, thank you for joining. I appreciate it very much. Uh, and uh, thank you. I uh, hope you're well, hope your families are well, and that uh, that we get through this and uh, looking forward to the fall. So let me share my screen here with you guys. Uh, this is going to piggyback pretty well with what um, Tim Roach was talking about on Wednesday, because I really think that uh, one of the key pieces to building a culture uh, and, a, and a culture that's going to last over a period of time is uh, is involving your feeder program. And uh, there were some good questions and some good discussion at the end of Tim's uh, talk about that. And I think this is gonna feed real well uh, into that. So uh, basically talking about uh, uh, what's gonna happen in your youth program, what's gonna happen at the level of your junior high kids, and then eventually the, the, the freshman program and then feeding on into your uh, feeding on into your, uh, your, your freshman program. So um, things I think that you need to consider before you're installing your system is that you, you've got to have a strong philosophy on what you want to do. Uh, it needs to be, we refer to having an identity. We, we, uh, that we can hang our, and you look at number four there, that you can uh, hang your hat on, what's your bread and butter. Uh, but I think before you go to a, feeder program and start talking about what you would like to have them do in order to prepare your kids uh, to come into that uh, into that system is you better be pretty committed to it and it better be the primary thing that you're going to do and not just uh, not just a supplement I don't think you can ask them to do uh, supplemental things so you you better limit it to what the primary uh, philosophy that you have and the other piece is that, is that if it is the primary piece that you have, there needs to be a play-action passing co complement to it. 
uh, that, that you teach along with that. Um, and then again, that idea is uh, that, that you have bread and butter. Uh, you know, what are you going to hang your hat on? And uh, I like to tell a story about that. Uh, there was a, I think it was a, I think it was back in 2004. We were in a, we were in a knockdown drag out with, uh, with Marshwood. And uh, about four minutes left in the game, uh, we were down by a score and uh, fourth and three right around midfield, didn't feel that we were in a position where we wanted to kick the ball. So we were going to go for it. So take a timeout, go out in the huddle and, uh, you know, you look at the 11 guys in there and say, well, guys, what are we going to do? And, you know, it was pretty much, <laughs> it was pretty much unanimous. You know, they look at me and said, coach, let's do what we do. And uh, said, so we're going to run triple. And they said, yep. He says, that's what we're going to do. So I said, okay, you know, here's the formation. Here's the, uh, here's the direction. Walked out of the huddle, picked up the first down, uh, picked up another first down. And then on first and 10, we go play action pass off the triple, end up scoring, kicking the extra point and won the game. But uh, it wasn't my decision on what we should do. It was theirs because it was something that they'd been doing since they were in the third grade. So, uh, uh, so you talk about developing a culture, you know, it started with those kids believing in, in the offense that we run uh, all the way up through and then making it work in, at a crucial time uh, in, in a game when they, were, when they were on playing varsity football. So, and I think the other thing is, is it gotta be a commitment. Uh, you're they they need to know that what you're doing is not a quick fix and it's not a uh and it's not a it's not a gimmick uh and you can't dabble with it either once you make a commitment to offense uh it, it's going to be a hundred percent commitment um you can't uh run a few plays out of this philosophy or out of this system along with hey but this is our base not your base has got to be your base and uh and you got to sell that to them uh, you know, the player's belief and the loyalty and the confidence that, you know, that that situation that I told you about that happened uh, in, in that game against Marshwood, that that started long before those kids ever got to us. And then the, and then the fourth piece there is uh, you can't stagnate. you got to stay innovative. Uh, there are new things that come up all the time. And I think it's real important that uh, that we don't just say, hey, just because this worked six years ago, eight years ago, 10 years ago, uh, that that's going to continue to do, you know, that's what we're going to do. Uh, you, you know, uh, you, you got to visit places. You got to, you got to talk to guys that are doing the same thing that you are that may have a ring, a new wrinkle or, or something. Uh, and, and so I think staying innovative and then also keeping your feeder programs uh, up to date with these innovations is, is a real important thing. Coach, I'm going to oh. chime in there. I, I just think you make a good point on something to hang your hat on. I, I know sometimes, uh, you know, sometimes they, some people have felt like when, you know, like when we were in that state game and we got behind that we maybe played it a little too close to the vest. Um, but it, it certainly turned out well for us. But what we were doing was just, you know, going with our basic formations and our basic plays and what we do well so we could execute it. And, you know, when you get in those situations, you know, you don't want to have to go to something that, that your kids aren't comfortable with. You, you know, like our, our kids know that, you know, we can run jet sweep and QB counter off that and our play action off that. And, and you know, most of the time that's going to be pretty good. So um, I think that that's a, a good point, um, you know, a good, good point to make is, is having that identity all the way through your program. It's pretty good. Like those Calder twins that were running jet for us this year, those guys have been running jet since they were nine. You know, so they – uh <laughs> You know, I think that's important that you worked out all the way through. So that's a good point there. Oh, exactly. I think that that's a that's a good uh, that, that that you've got to you you've got to hang your you got to hang your hat on something. And uh, they they and the kids need to the kids need to know what that is and they need to believe in it. But but it really starts in the feeder program because they're a major piece of that. You got to get those guys on board. You got to get them to buy into it, and then you got to get them to commit to it. Um, and, and it's one thing to say that, but then it's another thing to make the effort to do that. And I think 
there, there needs to be a good working relationship uh, with, with those guys. Uh, you know, you talked about it, Mike, about you've got some former players that are involved in yours now. Tim talked about that. You know, we're in the same position. But I'm going to throw something else out there, too. Um, I think another piece of that is we've got some guys, and, and now, and then also when I was here trying to build the, the feeder program uh, when, I, when I was the head coach here, was we had some people that maybe had some kids that had gone through the program but stayed and, are, have, and, and, and made a long-term commitment uh, to that program because they knew how important the continuity was. And so I think that, um, you know, having some people like that, as well as the former players, uh, uh, it, 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 that if you can have a mixture of that, I think you're going to have, you're going to have a, uh, you're going to have a successful uh, feeder program uh, coaching staff, if you can have that. Um, you know, that idea of them teaching a, a good solid fundamental base and how important that is uh, for your success uh, at, at the varsity level, at the JV level, at the freshman level, and then, of course, you know, the seventh and eighth grade level and, 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 and all the way down through. And one of the things that we found is developing teaching progressions for each individual position has been very, very important for us. Uh, it took a lot of time. It took a lot of effort. Uh, we involved our young guy, our, our, our younger uh feeder program coaches and doing that. And that was the selling point is they felt like they were a part of building those teaching progressions. So they were willing to do it. Now, some yeah, I'll, of the I'll, I'll make a point on that coach. I think one of the best things that we've done at, at Levitt is when we do our camp in the summer, uh, all of our youth coaches are out there with our high school coaches. So, you know, those guys are working there, you know, the drills that we would like to see them do, you know, with the younger kids, but then when the younger kids leave and the older kids come out on the field, those guys follow around a, a position coach. So, you know, we try to create some experts all the way up through the program, particularly at the middle school level. Um, you know, my dad's been the middle school coach the last few years, and he basically just told guys, like, you're coaching outside backers, you're coaching, you know, uh, DTs, you're coaching this. And those guys, that whole week of that camp will spend that week just following us around and watching what we do in Indy, watching what we do in group, and then seeing the coaching points in the, in the team period. So, and those guys love it, you know, because they, they get a first, you know, front row seat out on the field and, uh, you know, it makes them feel like, like they're part of it. And I think that's a big thing. If you make them feel like they're part of it, uh, you know, then they want to be there. And I, another conversation I remember having, too, when, when my son was a uh, – uh, my, my youngest son, Sawyer, is a freshman now. When he was a sixth grader, we had two fifth and sixth grade teams. And, you know, I was helping out uh, Wes, who I think is in here, was, was the head coach. Uh, I was helping Wes, you know, coach up our son's team. And then we had a couple other guys who were coaching the other team. And, uh, you know, we had suggested, let's practice together, run the same offense, do all that. And they're like, eh, we're gonna, we might want to do some things different or, or whatever. And I remember telling the guy, like, look, you can do that. Like, that's fine. I'm, I'm not going to be mad. But. You know, when my kid gets to high school and your kid gets to high school, and my kid knows all the terms and your kid doesn't, and, and you know, he doesn't know the coaching points, you know, that's pretty much going to be on you. You know, your kid's going to be behind because you're not willing to do this now because you want to do something you, you want. And I think if you turn on a light bulb in his head, like, you know, yeah, he, he's right. Why would I want my kid to be at a disadvantage when, when he gets up there? So I think that's a good point to me. That, that, that's, a, that's a good point. We'll touch on that a little, a little bit later on. So some of the things that we've done to try to build that, commute, that, that continuity, they, they worked real well uh, before. And, and I got to tell you, probably one of the, the biggest keys to us right now is that our feeder program guys are on board. They are hungry. They, they want to learn and they want to prepare kids so that when they get to the high school, uh, that, 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 that they're ready to perform uh, at the level that we're looking them to. So we got a bunch of guys that right now that, that, that I, I'll tell you, they're fun to work with. They really are because they're, they're, like, they're like sponges. And, 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 most, and a lot of them got a fire in their belly for this too so we're in a good we're in a good place and i know that some guys might not be so 
maybe some ideas to help build that continuity that you don't have because I know a lot of guys that have told me that they're fighting that battle with their feeder programs. So an open line of communication, you know, we, we really, if, if, if you got a question about offensive line and you're coaching a third grader, call me, I, I, I you know, send me a text, come to practice. Uh, there's an open line of communication. Uh, you don't have to go through, you know, a chain of, you know, a, a can't, a, a whatever, you know, come to me if you got a question. We want, want that open line of communication. Uh, we're, we're, clinics are big for us. Uh, and like I said, our practices are open to anyone. Um, we're, we were in the process of doing clinics for our feeder guys when this pandemic hit. Uh, so we went from doing face-to-face -face clinics. We did our first Zoom clinic last night uh, with our uh, with our feeder program coaches, uh, and, it w and it went pretty well. Uh, if if I'd have used a dryer erase marker instead of a wet one and known the difference, I could have got the whiteboard cleaned off a little quicker. But uh, otherwise than that, it went it went really really well. Um, we do. Uh, we ran a youth and a junior high camp when I was the head coach here, and uh, and and there still is one that's going on now, and it kind of worked a lot like the one that you're running. Uh, we have a coach's handbook and a drill book uh, that contains all the progressions that we'll talk about here in a minute. Uh, that's been invaluable, and uh, and we're in the process of putting training videos together as well. Uh, uh, play videos, uh, drill videos, uh, hoping going to be able to, those are all going to be able to be up on our, uh, on our district huddle site so that they'll be able to use those things. But I think the biggest thing is, is that, uh, and I'm, I'm, and, and some coaches, when they approach the, uh, feeder program, it's, uh, it's, here's what we need you guys to do for us. Well, that's not the approach that we took or that we're taking now. It's not what you can do for us. It's what, what how can we help you? What kind of a, uh, of a support system can we be? You know, where, where, do you, where, where do you need guidance? Where do you need help? Where do you need uh, information? Uh, and and be, be the support system for them as opposed to hey i need you to do this we need you to run this play we need you to teach these players to do this i, I think if you go in with that approach it's totally wrong it's got to be it's got to be the other way around you know what uh one of the head coaches that i worked for early on in my career said uh it's uh it's more uh people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care so if they know that you're that you care about them uh, and are willing to work for them, then uh, that, that's where that that's where that open line of communication can start. So here's something that we came up with. Uh, you know, one of the things that people told us when when I first came here at Massabesic, and people are telling us now, is that hey, you you can't run the triple option because uh, uh, geez, how do you know when you're going to have a quarterback that can do that? And, uh, you know, it's the idea that uh, we can't recruit people, so we need to develop them. So the way we look at it is that, you know, third and fourth grade, we, you know, we're going to have two or three kids that are going to play quarterback, two or three kids that are going to play fullback, three or four kids uh, that are going to be uh, that are going to be slot backs or a backs and three or four split ends and tight ends. And then so it just works all its way down through. But eventually if we're approaching this correctly, by the time those kids get to the JV and the varsity, we've got three or you got somewhere between three and six kids that have, that have quarterback, you know, six, seven years of quarterbacking behind them. And, uh, and we only need one every two years or sometimes one every three years. If a kid's ready to start, as a sophomore so you know and the same thing with our fullbacks same thing with our slot backs and same thing with our uh, our split ends and tight ends so if we approach this correctly and work together we're going to have what we need in order to be successful and you know i'll go back to a year i was probably in the mid probably in the mid 2000s 
where we had a team that, yeah, you know, we had uh, we had two quarterbacks that could read it. We had a kid playing split end who had played quarterback all the way up through that could that could read it. We had two kids playing slot for us that could read it. You know, we we had five kids that we felt pretty comfortable if we put behind the center that they could read it. And that's not because of what we did. That's because of what was done with those kids when they were coming through the feeder program. Now, now it's not like that every year, but I'm just going to, I just say that because, um, you know, I, I really think that if we needed to, after a week of practice, any one of those five kids could have gone into the, gone into Friday night and, and we'd have been able to maybe not be as successful as, as we would be with the starter in there, but we could, we could have made our way through it. That's a good point, Coach, and I also think there, too, if you've got dudes who have played quarterback coming up through, it's pretty easy to transition them to another position because they know everything already. You know, if you play quarterback, you're facilitating all those other spots, your, you know, your slots, your tails, your, your wideouts, your tight ends, so they have an idea of what those guys do to begin with. So to transition that kid to another position, you know, it isn't, a, isn't a huge deal, I don't think. Oh, and I and I and I think we we end up being be, we end up being better in the long run because of that too. So we really feel that the teaching progressions are the key, and uh, they're grade specific and they're totally fundamental based. Uh, and it's a building block formation. In other words, you know, our third what we do in the third and fourth grade is going to be reinforced, and then we build on it in the five and six. All, all the way up through. And we've got teaching progressions for each position, both offensively and defensively. Uh, they, they individual techniques, skills. And I think the biggest thing is, is that we start, we start trying to use those, uh, uh, they, you can call them points of emphasis or coaching points or buzzwords. We want our kids to hear those words year after year after year. So that when, uh, you know, when, when, when a kid gets, you know, when a kid gets to us uh, and I know it was this way before, and I know it's going to be that way again, because of the way our, uh, our feeder guys are, uh, are absorbing this right now is that we're going to be able to talk to a kid about, you know, in, in, you know, if we say three technique, bang, he's going to know that. If we say read key on dive option, bang, he's going to know what we're talking about. So, or, or if we say, you know, we need you to, we need you to, up, you know, we need you to take an up and over step on this play. They're going to know that because of because of what what's happened down in those in those lower grades. You know, and basically they're the same drills, only they just gradually become advanced as we start getting into uh, getting into uh, uh, reading the whole triple or get into the play action pass part or start getting into uh, unbalanced formations. And, but things, the things that they learned early on don't change. They just get a little bit more specific. Uh, and then there's a terminology progression and an offensive play installation schedule as well. So we, this is how we went about developing those progressions. Okay? Uh, we knew that there needed to be fundamentals that were stressed at all the grade levels. So what we did was we sat down as a varsity staff and we asked ourselves, when a freshman goes from freshman to JV varsity, what do we want him to know? And we listed the stuff right down on a, on a whiteboard. And then we took the freshman coaches and we said, all right, what do you want an eighth, seventh and eighth grader to know when they get to you? built off of what we had for a list. And we just went down to each group, asked the seventh and eighth grade coaches, asked the fifth and sixth grade coaches, and then looked at our third and fourth grade coaches and then said, okay, this is what the fifth and sixth grade guys need. Can you do this? Can you teach a third and fourth grader this in a, in a year or in two years to get them ready to go to the next level? And then that's when we just st then we started hammering things out. Uh, and then we and then it was the fifth and sixth grade guys. Okay, this is what we the seventh and eighth grade grader 
coaches say they need kids to know. Can you teach your kids this? After having this kind of preparation come from the third and fourth grade level. And then we just worked our way back up. Now, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, and I, I, I'm retired now, thank, thank God, from the education piece. Uh, but I was, sitting in a, uh, I was sitting in an administrative team meeting probably, I don't know, maybe eight or, t maybe eight or 10 years ago. And, uh, they're start and they're talking about this backwards design is this new thing that we're doing in education. And I looked at it and I go, that's nothing but what we did to develop our teaching progressions. And, uh, our, our, you know, so, so I, I think it's a great, you know, commonality. So, so I raise my hand and I bring it up. Our superintendent wanted nothing to know about. Yeah. Oh no, no, that's totally, no, no, that's not what we're talking about. Bull snot it's not what we're talking about. But anyway, they just, uh, I, I, he, he, he didn't want to hear that. Uh, that's, that's a good point, Coach, too. I, I, uh, I'm the head of the science and technology department at our school. And, and sometimes when, you know, we'll have a discussion about, you know, curriculum coverage versus, you know, skills and, and that sort of thing and, and what we need to do. And I would say that, you know, September is the preseason when kids get to school. <laughs> You know, like you're doing all the things that you need them to do the rest of the year, making sure those are nailed down so that you can move through your curriculum. You know, it's, it's, it's no different. Uh, but, they, you know, most, most of them don't get the, the, the football analogy, but it, it really is the same thing in education, man. No, it's, it, 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 it really isn't. And, and, and uh, good, good teaching is good coaching and vice versa. That's why – I think that that's why – when, when we were in high school, your football coach went from being the football coach to being the AD and from being the AD to being the principal. <laughs> yeah. you, don't, you don't see that progression anymore. No, no not much. <laughs> you, you won't see it with me, man. I'm stuck in this one forever. I'm not moving up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, I, again, going back to that idea about making those guys feel like they're a part, you know, and making them feel involved. We, we involved everybody at all levels in those conversations. And the feedback we got was phenomenal because if, if, if we just as a varsity staff had tried to come up with these uh, teaching progressions, we would have been so far off. And I think in the long run, we would have, we, we would have dummied it down too much. These guys actually, oh, no, we could do that. No, no, we can do that. So I, I think they're, they're, they actually took more on than we would have put on them. And, uh, and, 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 that, and that was great. But one thing that we do do, and this is going to go back to what you said, Mike, we do allow them to have some flexibility and some creativity within the system. The only thing that we ask is that, okay, if, you, if, you're, if you're an eye guy and when you get in the goal line, you want to run power eye ISO to put the ball in the end zone, that's fine. But just use our terminology to get into the formation and use our terminology to call the play. So if, 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 you, if, if you, you know, we, you know, there are certain plays that we need to have you run for the teaching progression, but if you want to do something else, we, we don't want to. We don't want to take the fun and the creativity out, out, out of coaching. So do that, but just do it within the framework. Do it with our numbering system. Do it with with our terminology, and 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 that and that's fine. So, uh, yeah, I, I think the other piece before we get into this is the other piece is is that we want them to we want our feeder guys to feel like they have as much to do with the product that goes on the field on Friday night as we do. That the way we perform on Friday night is a reflection of them as well as it is from us. And again, I think that that, that idea of, of, of keeping them involved 
and, and having them be a piece of it is, is, uh, is really important. So we're going to get into some of the specifics now, uh, and this is going to be specific to the triple, but I really think that if you're a wing yeah. keeper, excuse me, I thought I heard somebody. I said, be careful. <laughs> That's one, one of my one of my triple colleagues. But I really think that if you're a wing T guy, if you're an I guy, uh, if you're a spread West Coast run and shoot double wing, I mean, it doesn't matter. You can probably take this. Pro it's more about the process I'm talking about now. The process that we used as a, as opposed to uh, specific to the triple. So um, this is what. We came, this is what we came up with as a progression for our third and fourth graders. We're not reading anything. Everything is going to be predetermined, the give, the keep, and the pitch. And, but we have one basic play for each position based off the triple. All our blocking schemes are base, one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, if they're passing, it's going to be you know, a one-step or a three-step quick pass. If the kids are able to do something at, an, at a higher level, then great, have them do it. And again, that idea of if you wanna run something else, that's fine, but use our terminology. But the biggest thing at the three or third and fourth grade level is we want it to be fundamental, but we want it to be fun too. So then at the next level, okay, the mites division, okay, the give, the give and the keep is going to be predetermined. Uh, but I'm going to tell you right now, we've had kids that have, uh, you know, fifth, uh, sixth grade quarterbacks that have been able to read the handoff portion as well. And if they can do it, then we say, go ahead, let them do it. Uh, but we do want them to find the pitch key and read the pitch key 100% of the time. We're going to introduce midline at this level. Uh, we're going to uh, incorporate the sprint out pass and start the counter game off the option at this time. Uh, and again, if that idea, if we can incorporate more, we're going to be able to. And, 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 if, and if a kid is ready, we really want to see if they can start reading that handoff portion. Uh, we're going to start doing some interior combination blocking. And we just want to solidify those fundamentals from the, uh, from the, uh, love, from the third and fourth grade level. Okay, uh, seventh and eighth grade, uh, our junior Mustangs. Okay, now we want them reading the complete triple. Uh, we're going to introduce the veer or the wide or the wide dive portion. Uh, so now we want to be able to read all three creases uh, of, of of the uh, of the fullback game. Uh, at this level, now we're going to start talking about play action pass off the option. Uh, we start looking at uh, getting into unbalanced formations at this time and starting to uh, talk about how we want to block on the perimeter and, uh, and, and pretty much all of our interior schemes. And at this time, we really think it's important for those kids to start having a trust in, a belief in, and a, a loyalty and a commitment to what we're doing. Freshman level. Uh, again, going back to the three creases, because that's going to be the highest percentage of our offense. Um, play action pass off of, off of all three creases. Uh, the idea on how we want to practice now uh, and uh, that the individual and the group periods are going to be a big reflection of, uh, of what we're doing. And uh, we have a specific period that we call option period. Uh, it's one of the team periods that we do each day uh, where it's nothing but just just triple and just play action pass. That's it. Um, and we'll start to incorporate that uh, in our freshman practices. Uh, we're going to start so, looking at our I, automatic. I'm going to stop that? you for a second. I just want to ask a, a question in there. When you guys do, I don't know what you guys' numbers are like, but when you do your Indian group period, are your freshmen with the older kids for some of that, or are they completely separate? Uh, th there are times where they are, and it has been because of numbers. Uh, but uh, if at all possible, uh, we think that it's important uh, uh, 
even if we are together, I'm, I'm fortunate that, uh, you know, I, I, may take, I may take our 10 or 12 varsity linemen off to the side uh, to, to get a little bit more specific into something. And then our freshman line coach will take the freshman kids uh, and, and, uh, and work on some of the basic stuff, maybe continue the blocking progression or, or some base stuff. So there, there are times where we will be together uh, because of numbers, but uh, then we're going to try to split that up as well. Yeah, I, I think we're probably in a similar boat to you numbers-wise. You know, we have, we have uh, we're right on that bubble of having too many to keep them all together, but not enough to, to, to split them either. So I, I've always found some benefit in, you know, when we start our indie period, they all start together so that those younger guys have those older guys as kind of a model to, to see some of the initial stuff. And then they might even watch them as we transition to – you know, maybe two for two blocks or whatever, you know, they can kind of watch a couple reps of that and then a coach will bring them over to the side and have do it on their own. So, uh, you know, I think some of you guys that are in that similar boat numbers-wise, that's a, a sound way to do it. It, it. it is a good way to do that. And uh, and I think, again, what it is is it it, it, it shows those, uh, those younger kids what the expectations are. Because we – because, I, I mean, if, if the freshmen are with us, I, 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 don't, I don't dummy it down. Right. They, they got to keep up. And uh, so I think it's good for those kids to know what what's going to be expected of them. So I think another reason why those combination younger kid, older kid, uh, individual periods are, are good. You know, and at this point, our, our kids need to start looking at it. Hopefully this has happened before now, but certainly has to be established at the freshman level. That quarterback is the leader. He's the field general. Uh, he's making a lot of decisions out there that that we don't have to make as a coaching staff. And then at this point, we really want to talk about that, yeah, this. We, we do what we do. Okay, uh, that uh, the defense can't stop every everything that we're doing. And sometimes it might take us two or three three and outs to figure out what that is. But if we're patient enough we'll end up finding something that will work and then, and, and, and then, and then we'll start having some success. And uh, big thing for us that you're going to, we talk to our kids about is SOS, stay on schedule. Um, we love the 10, 15, 25, you know, 60 yard TD runs. But when it comes right down to it, if, if we get three or four yards of whack, we're moving the chains. It may take us 15, 18 plays and eight minutes to score, but, you know what? While we're doing that, your offense is on the field. So, uh, so yeah, we get greedy and, and want those big plays, but when it comes right down to it, three, four yards of whack, we can live with that. So this last uh, screen that I'm going to show you is, is exactly – an example of the teaching, one of the teaching progressions that we use, and and this is for our our, grade, our third and fourth grade quarterbacks. So you can see what we have there for techniques uh, that we're looking at to work with uh, with our third and fourth grade quarterbacks, uh, the things that we feel they they have to that we'd like to see them master before they go to the fifth grade level. Now you'll see that there are things that are in red. Uh, those things that are in red are specific triple option uh, techniques and drills uh, that we have in our drill book uh, because of the offense that we run. Uh, the, uh, the ones in yellow are pretty much things that no matter what offense you run, your quarterback is going to have to do. But the, the, the things in red are the, are the things that we are going to stress with our guys because uh, because of the uh, because of running the triple, and then we've got our drills that that our court, the quarterbacks will do at that level. And again, uh, you you you'll see you you may see a different drill with our varsity kids. Uh, the the set drill, the fit drill, and the ride drill eventually all get put into one drill that we do. But it's basically the same drill that they were doing when they were in the third grade. Uh, and then we get to what our terminology is. Uh, they, we'd like to have 
you know, our third and fourth grade, and this would be all of them, not just the quarterbacks, but we want, you know, we want our fourth grade kids when they're going into the fifth grade, you know, to know the Navy formation, the King formation, the Aces formation and full house. Uh, they've got, they're going to know those three, they're going to know those three plays, which are basically the three options in the triple. Uh, but then we'd like to have them be able to run power as well. Uh, and then the, and then the pass plays there. So, so that's what a progression would look like so that uh, our third and fourth grade quarterback coaches now can go to that handbook and that drill book that we've put together and all of these things would be in there. Uh, they're going to see these drills done at our camp. They're going to see these drills done if they come to our practice and it just all feeds it all, it all feeds into one another. So, uh, so there's going to be one for third and fourth grade fullbacks and running backs. There's going to be one for third and fourth grade linemen. There's going to be one for full bay, uh, fourth, third and fourth grade uh, tight ends and split ends. And then the same thing, fifth and six for all of them, seven and eight for all of them. Okay. And then same thing, defensive line, linebackers, defensive backs for each grade level. And, uh, uh, Again, uh, take some time, but again, the, 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 I, I think that when we originally built these and the time we spent doing it with our feeder program guys, that, that was where the connection between us, them and us was built. So... I'll get out. I'll get out of that for now, unless somebody unless somebody wants. To, and if anybody would like, I, I mean, we can. I can. I can send you uh, copies of any of this stuff that that you may need or you may want. But uh, we'll. Uh, anybody's got any questions? I'd be glad to glad to answer. Coach, do you mind if I put that PowerPoint in my email to the coaches tomorrow? No, go right ahead. All right. Awesome. That's that's good stuff. I I think one of the things you know, and and I know you mentioned it, but I just follow up with it is, you know, it doesn't matter if, if you're a triple team or a spread team or a wing T team or you're playing odd front or even front or whatever it is. Like that's the progression right there. You know, you you lay it down into what you want kids to know at, at certain levels. Um, and we made the the education analogy. It's, it's no different than setting up standards in education. You know, it's, it's what you kids, what you want kids to know along the way, so that you can further them along from where they are. So, uh, I like the way you laid that out. You know, and and again, I I ha I have to say that we are in a very very fortunate spot because of the the because of the buy in, because of the commitment uh, that 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 our feeder program guys are showing right now, and. Uh, uh, I think, you know, a lot of, like I said, you know, some of them are former players. Uh, some of them have been involved in the program uh, for a while now. So they've seen this work when, when we put this together before. And I think they know that it, that, uh, that it, it will work again. If it, you know, if, uh, if we follow it and they, they're just, they're just, they're great guys to work with. I, I get excited. I, that, I get excited when I, when I'm spending time with them because, uh, because uh, because they have that, that that's the kind of relationship that we have with them. What do you think on like like how much conversation do you have about individual personnel with those guys? Like if you're looking at all the fifth and sixth graders, do you guys ever come in and say, you know, hey, like this is a kid I really like as a quarterback, or um, you know, maybe this kid you can have at running back, but he's really going to be a lineman when it when it comes down the road. Do you guys do a lot of that, or you pretty much let them guys decide? What I I would say that. Uh, that uh, as of right now, we were kind of a little more hands off with that. Uh, but, uh, but as our relationship with them develops, I think that we'll probably have more of those. I know that they have those conversations, uh, like the fifth and sixth grade coaches will have those conversations with the third and fourth grade guys as the fourth graders are transitioning. And the sixth grade coaches are having those conversations with the seventh and eighth grade coaches as those kids are transitioning. And we're certainly having those conversations with the eighth grade coaches 
as those kids transition. But uh, it's fun. Uh, I'm not going to tell you that we don't go down and watch one of those games and see a kid start to get excited about them. I'm not right. going to say that doesn't happen, but, uh, and, and say, boy, Hey, you, you know, keep that, you know, this kid's ready to, this kid's ready to read it. You know, right. you know, he, right. I, I think he can read the handoff key. So give that a try with him. I'm not going to say those things aren't happening or, or we're looking at a kid and saying, you know, he's playing guard right now, but man, I think he could run the crease. So let's, uh, Let's try him. We'll, you know, let's try give him some reps at fullback. Yeah, th th those things. Those things happen. Those yeah, things I think happen. They, I think they have to happen. You know, I, I, if you have a good relationship with those guys, they'll, they'll usually take it the right way. And uh, you know, I mean, you, you kind of know what you're looking for at the high school level. You know, position wise, specifically with the quarterback. You know, that, that's the one I run into a lot. I'll, you know, I'll see a kid with real good instincts, and you know, uh, you, you just you, you kind of get a feel for who can do that and, and who can't. So, you know, sometimes I'll interject and, and make some suggestions there. Another good thing I think we've done, you know, like we had two fifth and sixth grade teams. So when they have their drafts, they kind of divvy up the teams. That's always a, a nightmare, right? Because, you know, some guys want 18 B team, you know, some guys are trying, you know, I always, I always, when I was drafting with, uh, with Wessel Lapp, I guess when I was drafting with Chris Gray, we always used to say that, you know, we could pull, over, pull the wool over his eyes no good, but, um, you know, one thing we did that I thought worked out pretty well was we, we paired kids in the draft. So, like, if there were two quarterbacks, they were paired. And if I took one, you got the other one. Split and then we go to another yeah. position, a tailback, and this time you'd pick first, and then I'd pick next. And we kind of went back and forth like that. One to create two even teams, but to make sure that the two kids that I like at quarterback are on the same team. Yeah, that's and, – and I think that, uh, well, when we, when we went through this process the first time, when I was the head coach here – we, our youth program was all playing within the district. We had four third and fourth grade teams. We had four fifth and sixth grade teams. So you, you talk about, you know, by the time kids got to the, by the time they got to the seventh grade, there were, there were four quarterbacks right. that had been starting quarterbacks and four fullbacks that had been starting fullbacks. And uh, so that, that was, uh, you know, I, I, sometimes I wish it could still be like that. <laughs> I think that's you know? what Austin Hills has going right now, man. I think they're all in-house with their youth stuff, and, and you know, they're, they're in that situation. Um, but, I, you know, I remember when I was coaching baseball with Billy Fairchild over at Oak Hill, and he used to say all the time, like, you know, I, I want give, – give me, you know, give me the Sabata shortstop, the Whale shortstop, and the lead shortstop, and then I'll figure out who's playing second and who's playing third. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Yeah, there's a name from the past. Oh man, it was it was uh, you know learning from him early on. Um, you know, I, I probably you know most people associate Billy as a baseball guy, but he he's pretty smart in everything. He was a heck of a girls basketball coach, uh, and you know he knew he knew his football too. Um, but uh, just learning you know how to coach and and. Uh, you know, just uh, all sorts of different things with him early on. That was invaluable to, to me about program building and, and just doing things the right way. And, you know, sometimes when you're a young coach and you see these kids who are super athletic and they're kind of fringe kids, and, you know, he used to talk a lot about, you know, your, if my shortstop and my one-two pitchers and my catcher, those can't be fringe kids. Like, those are kids I got to rely on. Um, you know, so I've tried to carry that through as, you know, as you look at kids and kind of peg them moving forward. You know, what, what are they going to be able to do? Well, reliability is probably the number one factor, you know, on, on anything, really, no matter what sport you're coaching or, or no matter what side of the ball you're on in football or whatever. If you can't rely on that kid, you can't put him out there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's funny. I hear you talk about, I hear you talk about Billy. Uh, I think about, could, could you imagine if we'd have had this type of technology and we could have recorded Pete Cooper, we could have recorded – Tank Violet. We could have recorded Doc Hursom. We could have right. recorded Mike Landry. I mean, can you imagine the? Can you imagine the uh, the, the archive that 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 we'd have? Oh, it'd be and awesome. I, well, we're going to start building that archive now. So maybe down the road they they talk about some of us like that. You know. Well, we I might think be, yeah. might be a lot of editing back then. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're right on that, Wes. <laughs> but I think. I think that uh, I think that it's important for I think it's important for some of us that still have the connection 
with those guys it, uh, to, uh, to, to, bring, to, to, to bring the things that those guys brought to the sport uh, in, into this new level of technology because uh, that, 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 certainly the sport, yes, but probably more so uh, what, those, what those guys did to develop young men. And, and really, that's what we're all about. I mean, uh, you, th this is a teaching progression for football, but I, I think the teaching progression, taking a, taking a kid as a, as a third grader and bringing him up uh, through this sport so that by the time he's a senior and ready to go to college and that, 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 that he's a better young man that he would have been had he not been in, that had he not played football. Yeah, I also think, too, with that progression, you're – you know, we, we use the term perfecting a craft. Like, you're teaching a kid how to perfect a craft. Like, you got to start at this base where you don't know much, and you have to learn these basics, and then you have to keep building on it to make yourself, you know, better and, and better. Because, you know, if you want to earn your time on the varsity field, you've got to be able to perfect that craft by the time, like, you're a junior in high school. We don't expect you to have it perfected as a sixth grader, um, but by the time you get to your junior year in high school, we want you to be as, as far along as you can. You know, that's a, a very uh, – you know, that's a skill that translates to real life big time, I think. Certainly does. Cool. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop the recording, Coach, and that's what we'll put up. But you other guys, if, if you guys want to take your cameras off and, uh, and come in and just chat for a few minutes before Coach takes off and, and ask a few questions, we can do that. So I'm going to –